How did playing a love interest on the 100 help Ricky Whittle get the part of Shadow Moon? Was Yatita Badaki forced to come out because of confused fans? And is Emily Browning keeping her relationship a secret? Hi, I'm Dylan, and you're watching Asa. Get ready for some romance. Ricky Whittle as Shadow Moon. This actor is as unlike his character as it's possible to be. Not only is he not a convict, but he's British and not married. Despite starting his career as a Reebok model in the early 2000s, he quickly made a name for himself through his role on the British series Holly Oaks before he left for Hollywood. After appearing in shows such as Single Ladies and Mistresses, he landed the role of Lincoln in The Hundred. Surprisingly, it was his success in this part that allowed him to audition for American Gods. When producers decided to bring Neil Gaiman's 2001 book to the screen, they struggled to find the right actor for the part. As a result, a hashtag casting shadow social media campaign was launched to ask fans who they actually wanted to see as Shadow, and Ricky's fans were adamant that he should get the part. My name started to slowly seep in there and rise to the, rise to the top, fortunately, and so I got my peeps to uh, put my name forward and, and, and the audition process started. Five months and 16 audition tapes later, Ricky was officially cast as Shadow. In addition to his enormous success as an actor, he's also a qualified race car driver and skydiver, but this all seems to have come at the cost of his love life. In 2009, Ricky dated his Hollyoaks co-star, Carly Stenson, for two years before being spotted out and about with Gossip Girl actress Jessica Zor. However, the two never officially confirmed that they were together, and any relationship between them was obviously over by 2014, when Ricky was seen with Bruce Willis's daughter, Rumor. Sadly, like his previous romances, this one was short-lived. The next year, Ricky was getting cozy with yoga instructor Christina Colonna. In fact, the two even attended the American Gods premiere together in 2017. Since then, they've gone their separate ways, with neither featuring on the other social media sites since early 2018. To add to the confusion, Ricky hasn't confirmed if they're still together, so we have no idea if he's moved on to another boo or whether he's enjoying being single. One thing we do know, though, is that he has a lot of love for his fans. I love you guys. <laughs> and the feeling is mutual, so we'll just keep admiring him on the screen. Pablo Schreiber as Mad Sweeney. Like the 6 foot 5 inch leprechaun he plays on screen, Pablo is no stranger to heartbreak. In 2007, he married yoga instructor and chef Jessica Monti. After having two sons together, the couple filed for divorce in 2014. At the time, the actor told the New York Post, I have an interesting relationship right now in my life with transparency and honesty. The need to be honest has trumped everything else. While we're hoping that this doesn't mean the relationship ended because of dishonesty, it seems that the divorce was amicable, with both partners sharing custody of their kids. Yet, when he was understandably heartbroken about the divorce, Pablo never lost his sense of humor, and actually joked about a new relationship immediately afterwards. Even though he was very open about his divorce, he's been seriously tight-lipped about any romances since then, and it's easy to see why. A few months after his split from Jessica, Pablo was linked to Dancing with the Stars pro Karina Smirnoff. The two were seen out together a few times, but when Karina was spotted wearing an engagement ring in September 2014, everyone thought that Pablo might have been ready to take the plunge again. But he wasn't. In addition to never confirming the relationship in the first place, he and Karina weren't seen together again after the engagement rumors. Since then, there hasn't been anything to indicate that Pablo's in a relationship. It appears that the actor is taking the time to focus on his greatest love instead, his kids. What a sweet family. Yatina Badaki as Bilquis. As the goddess of love, people are undeniably drawn to Bilquis, and that includes the actress who played the role. A self-admitted geek and Neil Gaiman fan, when she heard about the casting call for the show, the actress immediately auditioned. Surprisingly, the scene she used to audition was the raunchy sex scene that eventually introduces her character to the series. But unlike millions of fans, Yatina didn't initially think of that scene as kinky. She admitted, It never occurred to me that it was going to be a tough audition because all that had been going on in my head was a woman trying to find love. I literally just sat in the chair and read. And though she's prepared to discuss any aspect of the risque role and her desire to portray X-Men Storm in a standalone film one day, the actress is remarkably silent about her love life. In response to fan queries about her lack of any kind of significant other on her social media, the actress shared a candid Twitter post confirming her sexuality as bisexual. Apart from that admission, she's keeping mum about her romances and often says that she doesn't kiss and tell. Hopefully, if there is a special someone in her life, they're making her happy. After all, that's what really matters. Ian McShane as Mr. Wednesday 
We could argue that Ian was better suited to play Odin in his youth when he had a great love of mead and other types of alcohol. The British actor admits that due to his early entry into the 1970s world of show business as a teen, he lived a very decadent life that revolved mainly around booze and bad relationships. In fact, Ian admitted that because of his drinking and depression, he doesn't remember his first two marriages. Luckily, the internet does. In the late 1960s, he was married to fellow actress Susan Farmer for three years. However, the relationship was seriously strained. Ian elaborated, She was delightful, but I never saw her for two years. It was the 60s. After calling it quits with Susan, he met a fellow Brit and model called Ruth Post, with whom he had a long-distance relationship for two years before they tied the knot. During their marriage, the couple had two children, although Ruth said in an interview in 1995 that Ian was a lousy dad. Ouch. Sure, he admits that his early years with his kids weren't the best, but he made it up to them, so they've had a great relationship for the past decade. But this actor's romantic conquests didn't stop there. After a fling with adult entertainer Sylvia Crystal, which ended in a miscarriage and an ugly breakup, Ian decided to make some serious changes. In 1980, the actor met his third wife, actress Gwen Humble, and he was so taken with her that he decided to give up drinking. In an interview with The Independent, Ian admitted, When you start lying about drinking to the person you share everything with, it's time to stop. Cut to 2020 and Mr. McShane has been sober for 33 years and happily married for almost four decades. The best part? He's never looked back. It makes you better, I think, as a person and as an actor. Hmm, maybe that's the reason he can't remember his first two marriages. Because they were lacking in a little love. Omid Abtahi as Salim Omid certainly had his work cut out for him when he was tasked with playing Salim. As the actor explained to TV Insider, this character represents the gay and lesbian group, the Muslim group, and then the immigrant group, and then the gay Muslim immigrant group. Talk about pressure. Amazingly, despite the role's strange niche, Salim struggles with himself make his character highly identifiable, which is what attracted Omid to the role. Before American Gods, Omid appeared in The Hunger Games and The Mandalorian, proving that he had the skill and the resume to tackle the role of Salim. Unlike many of his colleagues in Hollywood, Omid is pretty private. His Instagram account is set to private, and he posts nothing but work-related content on his other social media platforms. But that doesn't mean we don't know anything about his private life. Thankfully for curious fans, Omid's wife has given us an insight into their home life. Omid married former actress and current hypnotherapist Sabrina Bolin in a secret ceremony in 2008. And though we don't know how long they dated before tying the knot, as they only confirmed the relationship after saying their I do's, their marriage seems happy and healthy. It's pretty much couple's goals if we're honest. They are both incredibly supportive of each other's careers, and they're equally enamored with their young son, Miles. Sure, they keep the day-to-day -day details of their relationship private, but Sabrina does give a great insight into how her interactions with her husband help her to work with others and help them both to grow. Who knew that actors could be normal people too? Emily Browning as Laura Moon Because she's basically grown up in the spotlight, Emily is a little wary of what she shares with her fans, and this includes details about her love life. But despite her hesitancy to dish on her romances, we're not totally in the dark about the workings of this actress's heart. After dating Max Anderson in 2006, Emily went on to try for a hat trick of Max's. In 2007, she dated Max Turner for three years. Then she dated Jeremy Irons' son, Max, for a year. A few months later, she started a relationship with fellow Australian actor Xavier Samuel, who you may recognize from the Twilight movies. Sadly, it seems this relationship wasn't meant to be, and the pair called it quits after three years. In March 2016, it seemed that Emily found a new beau, film writer Eddie O'Keefe. We happen to know that the two were still dating in 2018, as Emily shared a bunch of cute photos of Eddie together with her dog, Trouble. Since then, they've either broken up or are keeping their relationship under the radar. Then again, since Eddie has even deleted his Instagram account, we can't help but think it's over between them. And while we wonder what's going on with Emily's love life, she's focusing on her career. Surprisingly, the actress has admitted that she likes playing fragile characters because she can relate to them as she suffers from constant anxiety. She elaborated, When I'm in front of the camera, that's the only time I really get a release. I'm just there. And it's also for this reason that she's been able to embrace her raunchier side. Emily explained, I've always been very open to doing nudity. Playing a character is like a security blanket, and my brain switches off. For some reason, I don't give a shit about being naked because it's not me. Sure, acting provides her with a security blanket, but it also allows her to connect with people. 
As she explained to The Guardian, she's having the best time filming American Gods alongside Ricky Whittle, who she describes as the sweetest man alive. Who knows, maybe this on-screen romance will become an off-screen one. Why do you think the American Gods cast are so tight-lipped about their relationships? Give us a clue in the comments. And until next time, stay awesome!